moving ahead with our next panel discussion for the day. This is going to be an interesting discussion on the importance and best practices of brand purpose communication. Let's have a round of applause while we welcome our session chair for the panel discussion, Mr. Ruhail Amin, Editor Exchange for Media. I welcome you, Ruhail, and over to you to take the proceedings forward. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, thank you uh, for the lovely introduction. And uh, it's my privilege to be part of this another panel discussion uh, where, where the focus is going to be on the importance and best practices of brand uh, purpose communication. Uh, before I proceed, I want to invite quickly my uh, co-panelists. I have with me on this panel, uh, Rashmi Soni, VP Head, uh, Corporate Communication Vistara. Hi, uh, Paresh uh, Chaudhary, Group President, Corporate Communication, Adani Group. Uh, we have uh, Prasida Menon, Vice President and Global Head of Communications, Oyo. Uh, Minari Shah. Director Public Relations, uh, Amazon. Uh, Subayu Mishra, uh, Head of Corporate Communications, uh, Corporate Affairs, I'm sorry, Standard Chartered Bank, India. Uh, we have uh, Bhagyashuri S. Navare, uh, Associate Director and Category Head, PepsiCo, and Girish Balachandra on purpose. I hope all of us are here, and uh, I just want to quickly go and uh, to my first question. You know, we all know that in the last uh, you know we, we know that uh, brand purpose uh, it lives at an intersection of a company's authentic uh, reason for being and the uh, unmet human uh, expectations from the brand and of course uh, it, it touches the whole lot of uh, expectations it has the it, it needs to touch every stakeholder uh, you know your brand your customers employees community members but if you look at the last 11 months uh, or so, uh, what has happened, uh, there has been an increased uh, discussion about how brand purpose communication has got impacted by what we have seen uh, in the last 11 months. So I want to quickly understand, has it actually happened or is it just a theoretical uh, question that many people you know, raise? So I want to come to you, uh, Ms. Tony, first with this uh, your views that in the last 11 months, how big or what kind of an impact has brand purpose uh, undergone or how important has it become for a brand to showcase its larger purpose than just making profits? Um, hi, Rohail. Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me here. And uh, hello, everybody. Um, so basically, as we all know, that brand purpose is uh, the purpose, the cause, or the belief of the brand that uh, uh, you know that exists. Um, so, in a digitally connected world, consumers today are well informed, and then they have uh, choices at their fingertips. They want their lives to be easier. They want their needs met. Uh, they want uh, uh, brands to be socially and uh, environmentally responsible, and then they crave for a deeper connection, and they expect. Um, and they expect the brands to deliver all of this. Now, with market market phase getting uh, increasingly cluttered, uh, you know, brands are becoming more and more replaceable, uh, making it uh, difficult for brands to achieve loyalty and stickiness from the customer. Uh, and so, uh, what drives brand loyalty? Is good quality product or customer service uh, not enough, uh, or uh, consumers are looking for some sort of holistic uh, experience. So we all know that the, the behavioral attributes of uh, consumers are changing each day, and especially in, uh, you know, in these times uh, uh, when, you know, it is not only challenging for the brands to survive, but it is not easy for the consumers also with the, the kind of, uh, you know, changes in the policies, the, the you know, ever-changing guidelines and anxiety related to their health and safety. Uh, so, uh, you know, in, in, uh, we all know that you know consumers identify with uh, with uh, uh, you know and respect those brands that share their values and their social beliefs, and more so in in times like these. So um, and also you know the, the, those brands which are sensible to, uh, to social, cultural, and environmental issues. So basically, you know, it is more important right now for the brands to be human to the core and have strong uh, bonds with their customers. 
and this is right. where the brand purpose basically comes in. And this book, uh, you know, uh, it has to be authentic, it has to be genuine, and uh, it should be consistent. Right. Must be communicated effectively uh, to ensure that consumer. So uh, it, it and the, the most important thing is that the brand purpose cannot be met, uh, cannot just be mentioned on the website or publicity material, which is the explicit thing and it is important uh, to an extent. I am sorry. But it I'm sorry. I just, I just want to interrupt. The in every right. interaction. Sorry. Sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I just want to interrupt. I want to keep it to two minutes so that we all have like in 40 minutes. I will come back to it. I want to go to Mr. George. Uh, a yeah. couple of okay. seconds. Okay. That, you know, it, it, so I was talking about the explicit and it has to be implicit that, you know, it, it the brand purpose has to be felt and experienced by the customers in every interaction with the brand so that at every touch point, uh, it, it, right. uh, they, they, they feel it. And this Tara's brand purpose, as I as, as you would know, that delivering the new feeling of flying by providing intuitively thoughtful service. And right. uh, for customers are not just another bum on the seat. It actually comes across in every communication and in every action from the brand. So, right, right. Uh, Mr. Chaudhary, my point was that what is the new meaning that brand purpose has taken over the last 11 months? So if we could if we could all yeah. have like two or two, three minutes to it so that we can have more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I think your, your question was that what has changed in the last 11 months, especially on the right. purpose, right? Uh, so, I, so I think I think the last 11 months has only demonstrated people who with character. If you have character, it doesn't matter you're a startup or you're a Adani group or you're an alliance or <clears throat> you're a mid-cap company that is struggling, right, in terms of the market dynamics. But if you've right. shown character, shown character, to be aligned with what the what, what its purpose is basically nothing but it just gives you hope purpose is gives you hope it gives you direction on the development journey that you're going both internally externally are those people believe in your purposes you know because you've seen i work with mukesh ambani's i work with the levers group and i work with randaxi gsk you see a lot of vision mission statements uh, you know in the in the conference rooms in the aisle beautifully demonstrated and also in the loose a, a lot of times Right? Are you living those visions? Are you living that purpose is something very important, right? In the last 11 months, what I've seen that the brand purpose has only been strengthened uh, for people who who set their vision without altering it. Saying the vision is not for 11 months or 12 months, right? It's it's a 10, 12, 20 year vision. Now look at the Adani right. group. We move from a $17 billion market cap company to a 17, 70 market cap company. We launched two massive businesses in this period of 11 months, which is not right. just expansion of Adani gas, but also Adani airports that we took over about seven airports to at, at one shot. Um, you look at where our uh, direction on sustainability has gone. So if you look at the sustainable parameters that we measure on social impact, economic impact, that's taken a massive turn. The Adani Foundation has put more money into the social impact uh, programs than it's ever done before. Right. The impact of, of, of our communications has been felt like never before because people had a different paradigm. There was fear in the masses. There was fear in the economy. There was fear with the stakeholders. And how does an organization with character really lead from the front and strengthen that brand purpose is what I think a lot of companies have shown. And I can give you examples. I mean, there is one Vistara I know, Rashmi, from, from a long time. Uh, Minari has been a very, very close friend of mine. Uh, I've dealt with Prasidda in the past before with how Oof, Oyo, which was like this and now showing uh, a kind of graph of words. But brand purpose to my mind has been strengthened massively and only with people with character have demonstrated that. And if you've right. and the people were saying, oh my God, everything has come to a standstill, and no, and, and you know everything is gone, and consumer sentiments have gone. You've seen the last three months where the markets have gone, right? And right. and all the you open a CNBC, you start a ET now, and all our good friends on the media who talk about saying this is nothing but liquidity is absolutely rubbish. It's the real consumers of India which has come forward and saying, you know, I'm going to win this battle. Right. Uh, um, Ms. Manit, uh, as uh, Mr. Chaudhary also said that, you know, communicating that brand purpose with your stakeholders and we always have an outwardly uh, approach to it, like the 
consumers, the end consumers. But what about the immediate employees? It's, it's pasted all over, as he said, in the boardrooms and everywhere else. How do you make it more understandable? I mean, what is the audio story like to make brand purpose more understandable or relatable to its immediate stakeholders and employees? Well, I think that's a very, very good question. And I feel like employees play a very, very important role as your brand advocates. Um, and if they do not buy a certain proposition or if they are not completely aligned, then it's very hard for you to reach out to your other stakeholders, which in our case is not just the customers, but also our retail partners. Uh, and I think, which is where when we talk about brand purpose, something that we did when we covered uh, pandemic in the street house was to take a step back and understand how is this going to impact your business and therefore how is it going to impact our partners, our customers uh, as step one and then you know plan for various scenarios where employees become a very integral part if you understand why they are saying what they are saying. Uh, another, uh, another aspect to it is you know whenever you talk about uh, brand purpose or whenever you're looking at communication in any form, um, the, there's a lot of tendency that we as brands would have to talk about things that matter to us as a company, which matter to us as a business. Uh, but I think, you know, this was a phase which kind of forced us to think about things from the perspective of the audiences. Now, uh, whether it is employees who move to a remote working model and want to understand how do they stay productive, how do they stay connected, uh, they are anxious, they are hearing things around, we went through cycles where, you know, employees were impacted, so how do they kind of bring that group together? Uh, or for that purpose, uh, you know, when you talk about customers, how do we keep in mind what is it they want? As an example, when OEMO um, had started its business after the lockdown, we spoke about sanitized space. And, you know, we, we went with that proposition because that's what we as a team understood would work well and would give our uh, customers the confidence to come back and stay in our hotel. But then we also backed it up with a lot of studies and you know, focus groups to understand what matters to them. And it's our employees and partners who came back with the idea that we need something called sanitize before your eyes because we don't trust you. So I think it's, it's a good mix of kind of bringing a balance between what you as a brand stand for, but also understanding what's relevant for your audience uh, given their evolved lifestyle. Right. Uh, Misha, tell me, I mean, uh, in your view, uh, when you look at the entire, uh, you know, uh, like 2019 and then we got in 2020, uh, how has it, the brand, the conversations around brand purpose shaped? Uh, has it undergone change? Are brands uh, increasingly trying to showcase it more than they used to? How do you see this? Where Amazon's concerned, I think it's always been about brand purpose. I mean, I think it's pretty well known that we kind of aim to be the most customer obsessed company on the earth. Uh, and it's earth, not the world. Um, and uh, I think there are inner complications. I think we've always been about brand purpose. It's so ingrained in the DNA, in meetings and everywhere you constantly hear, but the customer, how is it for the customer? You, you hear it at every single level. Elevator conversations. Uh, and that's what I think brand purpose means. It's imbibed, it's in our blood. I think all the employees, it, it's not necessarily on the walls and so on, it's, it's in the blood, it's in the brain. And I think what last 12 months is, I think we were more cognizant than ever before the responsibility that a company like Amazon had. And we, as we had to play such a critical role in making sure that our customers got everything that they needed and they got it safely from their houses. But at the same time, we had the huge responsibility of making sure our employees were safe. Our employees were as much on the front line. They were delivering out there, where they were working. I mean, all of you hopefully would have had those experiences. And uh, that's right. the cross. And so keeping them safe, I think that was critical. And one could not have pivoted to that uh, so quickly as we did. You know, we had to change the mix of what people needed very quickly, you know, work with our seller partners to change it. All of it won't work unless brand purpose is just deeply involved. And I, I don't think brand purpose is something, you know, that can change so quickly, that you can have more conversations around it. It has to be mechanized, it has to be a process, which is in your day-to-day -day purpose. And that's what gives you the flexibility and agility when, you know, absolutely unprecedented uh, events to try to last. Right. Mr. Mishra, so uh, same question, but a little bit uh, 
differently for you like how do you maintain in all of uh, the things that happen on brand on an everyday basis that the brand purpose remains the centerpiece of all the activities i mean is it i mean how do you practice that is it easy is it difficult hi uh, thanks uh, i think i'll just take a step back and before we talk about uh, brand purpose and communications couple of quick things i think uh, since since your question is actually pegged to the last whatever 12 months of the pandemic i think one very interesting thing has happened is people have acknowledged all employers organizations uh, have started acknowledging a lot more about about the contribution of their employees and that internal piece has come alive okay, a lot more than it usually does so that's one big difference i'm seeing pre 2020 uh, and uh, onwards the second piece that has come in is there is a heightened sensitivity towards uh, client service Okay, so I can name Mahar Bank. I can name probably most of the leading banks and other organizations where there is a heightened sensitivity towards client service because you know that you are operating under, uh, you know, limitations. So eventually, this has right. progressed and evolved over the last twelve months into finding a sweet spot where you are still caring for your employees much more than probably that you used to because of the necessity of it all, and the same time ensuring the client service is happening on time. and what does that happen what does that resulted in that's resulted in a lot of clients acknowledging uh the organizations that service them right so uh for example we get probably more uh, complimentary emails in a week than we used to get in a year which is not to say we are not doing good service but i think the palpability of it all has has shot up and the sensitivity if you if you have a sort of a high sensitivity index i would see that sensitivity being very volatile so i think that's the number one thing that's happening uh the second thing is it's reflected in the way people feel about their organization so parish made this uh, reference to sustainability right uh what we have seen is we have we have about 600000 people in the bank in india we have about 22000 people in active offshoring so that is about 30000 people we have seen dramatic increase in employee volunteering through the virtual interface so if i have an opportunity where you know opportunities like let's say teaching virtual etc so we thought the ev numbers and we have mandated ev ev numbers across uh, globally so we thought these are going to decline okay it's actually gone up so uh, it's it's completely an eye opener for us i don't lay any uh, claim to credit on that count uh, but the fact that people started getting sort of sensitive about society about community about the fact that their employer is doing this and came forward in sort of part of it right is is very important i think these kind of things inform uh uh brand communications in more ways than just you know having vision and mission statements like minari and parish and others refer to uh that's one thing i think on the other side uh in terms of going to clients and consumers uh it's 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 more of chasing the flow of events because we can't really predict in this kind of volatility what events are going to be so if you take a case in point let's take tier 2 cities and all your uh e-commerce has ballooned over the last 4 5 months you know now we don't know whether this is going to be sustained or uh, I, i don't want to hold hostage to fortune on this but uh, if you look at it e-commerce has gone up and you have hundreds of data figures on it like flipkart says 70% of the e-commerce sellers are from tier 2 tier 3 cities now that's very interesting right um and and such other things have happened but i think there in terms of tactical communications okay for your brand for your business product services etc i think that is more like you know quickly understanding the market being nimble being quite anticipative responsive etc etc and working the communication but i but i think that will be more tactical than it's going to be strategic over at least the next 18 months because we really don't know how the lie of the land is going to shape and you know sort of fall in place uh right. yeah so so that's problem yeah right i'll come back to that. i have my as another round of question uh, ms nawari i mean just quickly and then uh, mr balachandran your thoughts on the new meaning that brand purpose has taken has it taken at all you know to you mr parai that yeah so it definitely has taken a new purpose uh, we ourselves are consumers and we feel that uh, every uh, you know every day right more than ever we think about what we are doing and have consciousness in what we do but from a brand standpoint uh, i think uh, you know when we are listening to consumers more uh, intently we're picking up the consumer in this time of social distancing is craving for human connection and therefore they're looking for things that are really simple honest empathetic 
uh, you know, communication that is trustworthy. Uh, and they want for communication to have consumers in the center of whatever they are doing. So if I were to just put it in a uh, you know, small uh, phrase, uh, you know, I need to I, I need to think all this uh, survey that uh, implement the uh, barometer survey during the time. And uh, the one big thing I up was the consumer said they were looking for brand to provide a solve but not to sell. So really they're looking for something right. that solves their problems there but not do a sell. And I think that's the new purpose a brand should look at. Providing a solve but not a sell. Right, 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 right. Great. Uh, quickly, Mr. Bhavatan, your thoughts? Uh, Yes, very quickly. So I'm going to cite a, a data point from a report from Havas that says that people wouldn't care if 77% of brands disappeared. So, you know, that's the context in which we're operating. And I think over the last 11 months, what's happened is we've been really, we've seen how the people who are really serious about purpose have sort of stuck with it. And others have felt more challenged when it's come at the cost of profit. So um, I, I, I would say that in the last 11 months, you know, we've uh, been able to establish the brands who are serious about their purpose, even at the cost of profit, because it's easy to be purposeful when things are, are going well. You know, you can spend more on your community initiatives, you can spend more on CSR, you can spend more on philanthropy, but none of that is really purpose. Purpose is, and I think a big thing also depends on where purpose is owned within the organization. If it isn't owned at the very top, then it's going to be restricted to at most a marketing campaign. But if it is really owned at the very top and it's part of the DNA of the organization, then it's something that's really unshakable, whether or not there is, you know, a tough economic situation. Right, right. Great. I want to tell you, Tony. Uh, Royal, I sorry, I just want to comment to what Girish was saying, uh, and I think largely he's covered a few points that I wanted to make. But uh, you know, while brand purpose, etc., is being driven from the top uh, in most of the organizations in consultation with all your stakeholders, but if it is not owned at the most at your grassroots levels, it it can it can fall like a pack of cards, you know. And we've demonstrated that with with Unilever when I was there for many years, and we had a brand purpose on sustainability. Uh, especially in a laundry segment, because there's a lot of environmental damage that was going on, uh, you know, in terms of the, the chemicals into, into the drain. And, and the group came up with a sustainability uh, a formula, which was a very unique one in the world. Unless it was not owned by the grassroots, not just the employee, because when people talk about internal communications, they normally say employees, employees, employees. Of course, employees is your 40% of our KRAs, all of us on, on, on this chat and outside who are watching and listening. But even your partners, who some people call vendors and suppliers, they like to call it partners, all these guys uh, have to own it at the grassroots level. And if they don't own it, it won't work. And to one more point that I think Shubha, you made about, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, take, taking the brand purpose forward and how do we uh, make sure that in times of crisis, you're, you're demonstrating profits, etc. or not demonstrating that. I think it's important that to know that in this last 11, 12 months, any of the communications team or the top management team has deliberately tried to amplify their work on on community impacts, right? Whether social, whether it's economic at all, or environment, uh, they have not been taken very well by 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 the citizens of this country, right? So when so there's so what we have practiced is citizen communication and not consumer communication. They're two different things, and the lesser you amplify that at times of crisis. Uh, the right. higher you can build the brand purpose within the established norms of what you want to do in, in the next 10 years. So amplification, try to do PR around it, try to, you know, put money on your social media channels to say, oh, you know what, I have trained 200,000 Sanghanese in some place. I've taken self-help groups, I've given so many masks, I've done this, I've done that. Uh, that, that can backfire. So it's important that the community speaks uh, for you, the media speaks for you. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's great. I want to just quickly come to my second question and then I'll uh, come to all of you. And I want to start with Ms. Sony that, uh, tell me how can you uh, define, build and market a brand purpose that feels uh, so relatable and so contextual? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I'll specifically talk about the current scenario in the pandemic. Um, as I, I said that, you know, it was not easy for the consumer. So some amount of empathy in the form of consistent communication, quality and flexibility goes a long way in finding uh, a permanent place in the heart of uh, our customers. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, and I'll give you an example from Vistara that, you know, when uh, people were struggling with the changing guidelines every time and uh, the cancellations because of, you know, the travel restrictions in various states. So, uh, you know, there were other authorities responsible for sharing that information with the customers. But, you know, Vistara took it upon us to put that entire uh, information together at one place uh, for them to access. So, uh, you know, in, in particular, which particular state, what is the uh, specific quarantine requirement or travel restriction? Everything was there at one place for them to look at. And also, customer engagement team was, uh, uh, you know, uh, contacting for, uh, uh, customers proactively to share that information with them. So we feel that, you know, uh, uh, th th there was this catastrophic situation which was brought about by the pandemic. And what brands uh, like us could do to make sure that you know we could ease out a little bit anxieties of our customers. So it is important, I believe, for the brands to put themselves in their audience shoes and think like them that what is relevant for them in these times. There can be various kind of brand campaigns, you know, which are purpose-led and which are business-led. But you know, we have to look at the situation, the times. And then we see that, you know, uh, what is it that uh, has a long term view that would naturally have a positive impact on the brand. So basically, uh, that is how. And then there was a campaign that was uh, actually started by us, which was flying feel safe again, which was to basically instill the, the confidence in people to travel because, you know, we have uh, SOPs uh, for safety and hygiene basically the consideration till today in the minds of uh, people, you know, while they choose an airline brand. So, uh, right. uh, yeah, so that's, that's actually very, very important to, you know, the brand to become very human to the core and understand the requirement of the customer and then deliver solutions specifically in these times. Ms. Menon, your thoughts on building a brand purpose that is relevant at all times? Yeah, I think it all comes back to a lot of uh, what Pradesh said and Minani spoke about in terms of, you know, A, it has to be entrenched in your DNA. And I feel like your purpose has to stand really close to your mission. I mean, I can say that for you that, you know, uh, during the pandemic, I think it was a time when we as a company reflected back a lot on what we were doing, you know, our mission and you know, how do we come to stick to it while at the same time. Um, ensure that you know, both our customers as well as our partners are able to see the difference uh, in, in our approach to the business itself. Uh, and I think one thing that stands out is whatever you do, I think um, it's also one of the points in, in, in the plan that we have to discuss is how close it is, is it to what is that the audience is seeking from you and what you as a brand stand for. Um, there's a very thin line between standing for, I mean, having a clear brand purpose and talking about it and making it sound like a PRable uh, headline, uh, so to say, right? Uh, and again, crossing that one more line and becoming like an opportunistic uh, company taking advantage of some of those sensitive emotions. So I think that balance is something which is very hard to see and you can do it as long as you are very clear understanding of your purpose, your mission, and it reflects in everything that you do in all your engagements start to finish. Um, and it's completely entrenched what you uh, stand for for your audiences. Um, as an example, you know, when, when uh, we were impacted by the pandemic, uh, we were helping a lot of standard passengers, especially foreign nationals who were stuck in the country by giving them hotel rooms and helping them. And I think we as a team took a very conscious decision to understand to what extent are we going to talk about it and how are we going to talk about it. Uh, it was important to ensure that the message reaches because there were a lot of people who needed our help and needed to know that we are there and we are supporting the government and we are working with the embassies. Uh, but at the same time, ensuring that you know we don't make it look like celebration because you don't celebrate things like this when you do what is something. Um, so so I, I think that right balance is super important. Right, right. Misha, your thoughts on this? Uh, I mean, how do you define, build, and market a brand purpose that feels 
relevant uh, and contextual. Right. So, uh, thanks. Uh, so, I'll just talk about uh, about it a little okay. generally. Sorry, I, think sorry, that I, I wanted to. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I wanted to go to Ms. Shah first, and I'll come to you after this. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Paresh. You want to go ahead? <laughs> okay. Are you okay? go ahead? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rahul. Um, I think uh, you know. First of all, uh, an interesting anecdote about Amazon. For the longest time at Amazon. Uh, there wasn't a marketing department. It had to reach right. a completely certain scale when it finally got into marketing. And even when I joined the company about four and a half, five years back, the PR globally was really small. It's only with scale that we've begun to do that. Because Jeff really said that brand trust is about doing the right thing when no one's watching you. And that, to me, kind of is you know your new constant. You know you know you don't need to market. Brand trust is not done by marketing. Marketing can only make the voice reach what you're doing. Everything else that's happening, you can make it sure that people are hearing it because we live in a very fragmented, dispersed world, and we want to make sure that our messages are heard. <clears throat> but we can't create it with marketing. Brand purpose is something which already exists. So, uh, you know, uh, in the last 12 months, we couldn't suddenly become someone who we weren't. If we have been always standing for, we innovate on the behalf of our Indian customers, or we innovate for all the small businesses who partner with us, that's who we remain. We just became faster, more agile, quicker in doing that. Um, when our customers were asking us, hey, are you open in XYZ city? We took the social media to literally give a city by city update. An interesting piece I learned is, you know, we have to literally go one by one district um to get the permissions for our uh, business to operate so i learned that there were like you know 900 something districts i've forgotten the number now yeah. but at that point in time you know and we had to take permissions district by district for our people to be delivering and so we took to social media to give a district by district update because that's what really mattered to people we took to using our home page the gateway as we call it to communicate and tell people what were the essential items as defined by the government, what could we you know, give, and so on. So I think brand purpose is really about making sure the customers are getting what they want, the information that they need, and it's really something that they can use. Uh, anything else is fake and unauthentic. Um, so it's not about marketing. It's about really being honest and real. OK. Uh, Mr. Chaudhary, you wanted to say something, yes. Yeah, I was just, um, I think, um, into the previous point and to the question that you clearly asked about, you know, um, how do you, uh, what do you do to uh, to make sure the brand, the brand purpose uh, lasts for forever? And I think, I, I think there are just two key words here. Everyone must strive to gain the love and respect of your stakeholders. It's a very big statement to make. It's very, very difficult to achieve. Um, I've done some bit of work with Tata's many years ago, a 150-year-old, 160-year-old legacy of a company. In everyone's brand strategy document, you will see that how do we reach the Tata group in terms of brand advocacy. Even they got exposed when, when there were a lot of issues that happened many years ago. Um, so gaining love and respect um, is what the brand purpose should be for anybody. Uh, business is profits. Business is distribution of the profits. Business is touching people's lives, but gaining love and respect you, is, is, is big. The words trust, compassion, empathy, uh, you know, likability, credibility, and all that is time that everyone strives to do. Uh, but gaining love and respect is the most important thing. If you can achieve that, and the data point on a huge market research says that if you can achieve 70% of love and respect across stakeholder groups, uh, you, you you should be getting the Nobel Peace Prize or getting some huge bravery award from the, the current government. So, and I think that's that's where all of us must must strive. My last point is that as communicators and a lot of agencies who are also on the show and watching it from outside, I always say this uh, at, at associations that if all of us put together, uh, we we are the sum brand of brand India. If we can all of us create that brand India create the positive sentiments, create the love and respect. Uh, you know, I I India as a brand grows. India as a brand assumes center stage. And I think that's what the brand purpose should be. And that's what, at least it is mine personally and also professionally. 
Apart from the hard work, it is the hard work, you know, that that, that finally wins the customer. Uh, Mr. Mishra, trying to understand from you, um, in today's world, uh, how much do consumers actually care about uh, the brand purpose, you know, from their perspective? Apart from because, I mean, are they obsessed with just the products and services? Is the onus only on the brands to showcase the purpose at all times? Do customers uh, kind of, you know? Uh, care for it that much what is your understanding of it and also the previous question that how do you build that uh, you know that connectivity customer brand connectivity that stays uh, with the brand purpose no, that's an interesting question i don't think i have got a sort of a straightforward answer to that uh, but yeah but i i would i would rather disagree than agree to the view that customers don't really care about brands and brands uh, brand loyalty shift etc I don't think that's the case. Uh, uh, Tata's is a fine example, right? Tata's have gone through their own reputation risks, etc. Et but if if trust uh, has a synonym in India, it is Tata's, right? I mean, we could go on arguing about it, but that is where eventually the outcome is going to be. So I think that's the first point that I think customers do care about brands. I right. think the, the, the mistake that we often make is we are not actually practicing what we are communicating. I think that's the first dissonance. Uh, customers tend to spot very quickly. And today with social media, you always have this thing of it going viral. That's one. Right. The, the, the second thing is we oftentimes believe through straightforward advertising is like 
the school of thought in polity and political science that we have read you know that that a lie told many times becomes the truth unfortunately right. in in case of brands it doesn't happen okay fortunately right. or unfortunately whichever side of the fence you are on uh so you have to demonstrate what you're doing in terms of some tangibles whether it's service whether it's price whether it's whatever distribution etc uh and communication follows from there uh right. but i think one of the important things that that kind of can work very well today and uh, we all know the downsides of the social medium in communicating right but i think one of the things that can work very well today is probably look at brand activity and communications and i'm not talking business here okay but brand right. activity where there is a potential of things to actually go viral duplicate and i don't mean viral on the social medium which actually goes viral in a sense of an activity okay an initiative and takes its own sort of steam so i'll give you an example a clear example is the standard chartered mumbai marathon which used to be the marathon before the tatas picked it up from us so there are now 700 time races in the country who would have ever thought an indian uh, you know uh, having a nice meal of rice and dal and sabzi and sleeping it off would actually run a marathon today you know how many marathon runners are there there could probably marathon runners in this whole panel so there right. something took off and i'm again we are not we are not claiming credit to all of it but i think there is a potential the second potential i see today is cycling because you know there is a huge influx of uh, yeah, sorry there's a huge upsurge of cycles being bought friends of mine tell mm -hmm. me that you know they're running out of stock of uh, cycles why because again the whole personal mobility pollution all of that so sensitivity has come in through covid so is a brand right. picking that up right so i think in terms of communication it has to be blended with an activity and then it has to be communicated you know there is this right. there is a saying in marketing that it is not great marketing campaigns it is a darn good marketing i marketing uh, promotion based on a great business idea right right so you need to have an action at the core of it you can't just communicate that is that's not going to work that works only in politics as far as i as my knowledge goes you really have to put action into it you really have to demonstrate certain behavior and then the marketing can take off so so like one of the one of these guys who i know and I respect kiran kalap used to say that the communication needs to be an inevitability it is not a question of choice and why is it inevitable it's because you have done a b c and hence d that's how it becomes inevitable right so that's one part of it and uh, the three things that i saw that were important and it's were always important but it probably became far more important in this last you know 12 months one is how do we handle ambiguity because we had a lot of clients coming to us as communicators we had a solution to crack in terms of reaching out in absence of certain conventional ways we are we were doing things so how do we handle ambiguity the second was the sense of urgency with which we responded to stuff right so if i have if i have to put out a covid handbook in the next 24 hours how well am right. i doing it how well am i ensuring that it's reached and the third part is of course course correcting if i'm going wrong and all of us hand on heart would have heard uh, in these last 11 months more than we have heard in the rest of our probably careers except for the first few years of our careers so how do we course right. correct and and hence so that's 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 taught us a few lessons right right i i i am running short of time but i want to go to one more question but before that mr balachandran uh, your thoughts on building that uh, you know lasting brand purpose that is related to yes very quickly so i i like what subhayu said about the the disconnect between intent and action so and the gap in between is where the brand value really falls the difference between what a brand says and what it does the second thing is i feel brand purpose is really about differentiation and the reason i'm saying that is because as the markets become increasingly commoditized how do you then create an appeal with with a consumer that is more than just the functional value of your product or service so let me give an example um when asked about uh, what his job was um by the president john f kennedy the janitor at nasa said i am here to help put a man on the moon that's what he described as his job and you know uh, so the point that i'm trying to make is if we're able to show people the vision of what we of why we're doing what we're doing then the appeal of associating with a brand's ethos and value system becomes so much more aspirational right right my last question is a super quick 20 second answers straight to you uh, ms sony we have to stick to this timeline that 
uh, how do you market your brand purpose uh, and use it to take your brand to the next level quickly two things that people brands need to do to do this so basically when when i said that you know our brand purpose is basically to uh, deliver quality service in an intuitively thoughtful way so it's basically they have to uh, you know see that across all our communication which are explicitly shared with them through brand campaigns or any other communication that goes from the brand and as well as in the behavioral aspect of the uh, every employee that is delivering that service so uh, the brand purpose is so deep that you know it is being uh, so all the entire team is being galvanized by it. and they have become the brand ambassador to deliver that brand purpose every day every moment to every customer right right uh, mr chaudhry quickly your thoughts on this how do you market your brand purpose effectively well, just one line, one line very important that you make you, you experience you make sure that your brand promise is experienced every single day to every single stakeholder and that's that's where that's where it'll work great um miss menon quickly yeah so i would say that you know as long as it is authentic it is audience focused i think that's level 1 uh, for me and then of course you know i'll go back to what dilish also uh, touched upon i think you know being purpose driven is important but you need to be backing it with a very strong proposition if that doesn't happen the consumer will not care about the purpose i feel uh, and then backing it up and making sure it's action led uh, both from the company side as well as something which involves action in the consumer as well that would be over there right mr your actions speak for yourself every single piece will speak for yourself and you won't need to really communicate it um my best for experience and i'll take four seconds um last year oh, sorry year before last we went across 13 cities we literally stopped people on the road to ask about amazon without a fail we, we looked for not very Hey, English speaking. We will be talking of course the power lockdown and all. Every single person we stopped had an Amazon story. Uh, from the uh, people making the pujo uh, statues and saying silicon usme se lete hain, rang usme se lete hain, to you know people saying uh, we buy seeds for gardening. Everything for fire team is there. For watching, people loved it. Right. People had it. People know the brand when they see it. People experience it. That's it. I think right. that's that. Mr. Mark, uh, your thoughts on marketing uh, the brand purpose effectively? Yeah, I'd say you know appeal to the head and move the heart uh, is is really quite the motto we say. So on Kurkure, for example, we say you know it's uh, it's right. a, we want to transform everyday moments. So celebrate that moment on lace, bring simple joy. So appeal to the head and move the heart. that's that's really right. in a nutshell mr mishra well it's more about probably identifying whether you sign up to that brand purpose because not all brand purpose is noble so at least the hidden ones so whether you sign up to the brand purpose is for me uh, the most important thing and it doesn't mean uh, so that's one and and the second uh, is uh, probably uh, like girish mentioned find always right. new ways of connecting and differentiating Right, right, right. Mr. Bajaj, the final words. You have the final word. Sure. You know, I would say, um, in my experience of working with brands, helping articulate purpose, it also becomes a question of making active choices about who you want as your customers and who you appeal to. If you say that I have got something for everyone, then it's going to be a very hard sell. But the minute you start making choices to say that we want to appeal to. this kind of customer who believes in these kinds of things which matches with our value systems that's when you're going to be able to bring your purpose alive by saying yes to some and also being able to say no to others right 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 perfect uh, on that note thank you everyone for joining us been a wonderful discussion we're short on time thanks again for joining us